Mark Zuckerberg. There's not as many men who are as controversial as the man who created Facebook. From the infamous social network movie in 2010 to the Cambridge Analytica privacy scandal in 2018, every year brought out a new controversy. On a personal level, people began making fun of Zuckerberg's robotic style and saying he was a lizard man, owing to his odd mannerisms when testifying before Congress. Maybe Zuck needs to learn how to drink a cup of water. All the controversies seemed to culminate in 2022 when the metaverse efforts flopped and Apple's long-running feud with Zuckerberg led to privacy changes on iOS which severely affected Meta's personal ad targeting. But fast forward to 2024. Meta is up 550% since its 22 low. It's one of the main contenders in AI. Its AR glasses are being lauded as potentially the iPhone killer and the next generation of computing. And even Zuck has had an insane glow up in style and his public image. So how did he do it? In this video, I wanna discuss what the key decisions he made were to turn the company around how his new style has improved the public's image of him and Meta, and what the future holds for the company and stockholders. Decision number one, pivoting to short form video reels. With TikTok exploding, Meta needed to respond. Social media shift from seeing connected content or content from people that you actually follow, like your friends and family, to unconnected content or content that's recommended by a platform's algorithm that you don't have any connections to, it's been happening for quite a long time, but TikTok was really the catalyst for it to go into overdrive with the short form video format. And initially, Meta was caught off guard. But in a previous podcast, Zuckerberg has spoken why AI technology made it possible and why Meta had to catch up in that regard. The, the AI technology to now not just be able to rank the content that you're following from friends, but also really be able to actually do a very good job of, of showing, of basically recommending content from the whole corpus of content that's out there and making that be good. That's something that I think has only really started being possible in the last few years. Initially, Meta's push into short form content or reels was unprofitable for the company as it cannibalized users from the more established profitable parts of their sites, Instagram and Facebook, and really affected their profit margins in the short term. But since then, Reels has grown to a net value add for the company and it's really rewarded investors who have stuck with them. We estimate that with all the ranking and product improvements that we've made, uh, Reels has now driven more than 40% increase in time spent on Instagram since launch. In many ways, you know, Reels has, has uh, now graduated from being an early initiative to, to now being a core part of our apps. This isn't the first time that Meta's been behind on social media trends. For example, it had to mimic stories from Snapchat but you don't have to be the first to a trend to profit from it. And Zuck really made the right move here by continuing to adapt his platforms rather than sticking to the same old format. Decision number two, going into AI early. In 2022, Meta's AI GPU investments were seen as being very expensive and very risky. But fast forward two years later, they've definitely paid off. Meta bought GPUs throughout 2022, before the ChatGPT inspired AI boom in 2023. GPUs are effectively like pickaxes during a gold rush. They basically process the information that AI uses to actually run, and the AI craze led to them being worth their weight in gold. So Meta buying them early really took the edge off of their capital expenditure, their expenses, and help propel the company to being one of the leaders in AI technology, although they've since had to buy more and more GPUs, so that is a cost going forward. In particular though, their Llama AI open source model has been a really smart one. It's led to an ecosystem quickly developing where increasing numbers of developers become familiar with Meta's APIs and platform and technology, really pushing forward their brand above other ones that are paid for models. Decision number three, the year of efficiency. Zuck's infamous speech about layoffs and trimming the fat at Meta led to a huge stock price rally, which the company hasn't looked back from. 
Elon Musk stole the headlines by firing 80% of Twitter's staff and keeping the company running business as usual. But it's pretty clear that Zuck took a lot of inspiration from that decision for his year of efficiency at Meta, where they laid off 20,000 staff, got costs under control and gave Wall Street exactly what they wanted. Now, even though Zuck and Musk potentially were going to have a cage fight at the Coliseum, it's pretty clear that Zuck actually does have respect for the man in terms of his business ideas. Listen to this podcast here to see why. Elon led a push early on to make Twitter a lot leaner. A lot of the specific principles that he pushed on around basically trying to make the organization more technical, around decreasing the distance between engineers at the company and him, like fewer layers of management. I think that those were generally good changes. And I'm also... I also think that it was probably good for the industry that he made those changes because my sense is that there were a lot of other people who thought that those were good changes, but who may have been a little shy about doing them. People have been calling out big tech's wasteful spending for years, with there even being much speculation that many of them hired tech workers to do no work, but effectively banked them for speculative future projects so that their competitors wouldn't be able to get talent for their own projects. Bear in mind, many of these big tech workers are earning huge amounts of money in the hundreds of thousands of dollars per year, with stock-based compensation on top of that. The pandemic led to a number of tech workers regularly posting day in the life of videos on TikTok where they did little work and were enjoying a whole host of employee benefits. And that optically didn't look good to shareholders, for understandable reasons. Meta even ended up firing employees recently in 2024 for abusing their lunch allowances and buying groceries when they were meant to be buying their lunch. Streamlining the business helped Meta to get focused and was a direct catalyst for its recovery in my opinion. All of this leads me on to Mark Zuckerberg's massive style upgrade. Now you might think this is relatively superficial but in reality, the perception of a CEO as being cool has a huge effect on whether the public perceives his company as being cool. And the public perception of a company has a huge effect on the scrutiny applied by regulators. Think back to 2022. What was your perception of Mark Zuckerberg? Probably nerdy, money hungry, morally dubious, steals your data, or even lizard man. Are the allegations true that you are secretly a lizard? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with no. Uncoincidentally, Meta came under scrutiny from UK regulators when it bought Giphy, a GIF search site. Hardly the most consequential of acquisitions, but there was pretty much zero pushback from anyone but Meta when it was forced to sell the company by the CMA. Now, cast your eye to 2023, when Microsoft bought Activision, one of the largest gaming companies in the world. UK regulators again attempted to block the deal, but this time there was huge outcry from investors, from the media, and many were calling the UK uninvestable. There was so much outcry that the CMA eventually had to U-turn and reverse their decision, still claiming it as a win, but in reality, it was a pretty humiliating calm down. Would this have happened if 2022 Zuck was in charge of Microsoft? Of course not. Why would anyone stick up for Zuck or his companies when his public perception was so awful? Now fast forward to 2024. Zuck's rebrand has been long in the making, but it's clearly a very smart move. And whether it's genuine or contrived, public perceptions of him are beginning to improve and thus their perceptions of Meta are also getting better. Now for the future of Meta. We've seen the company's stock shoot up over the last couple of years, but can we expect anywhere near that same kind of returns in the future? Well, recently Apple warned that they may never create a product that is profitable as the iPhone. A sign for many that maybe the company is at an innovative dead end. But in my opinion, Meta could not be further away from this position. Founder-led tech hits different, and Meta is firing on all cylinders when it comes to innovation. Not only is Meta a leader in AI tech, which will shape the next decade, but in its Reality Labs division, real signs of a threat to the era of the smartphone are starting to develop. 
Meta recently announced its Orion prototype smart glasses that provide a seamless interface between the internet and reality. It came out to rave reviews from tech reviewers and hearing Mark's explanation of why smartphones could be replaced makes a huge amount of sense to me. Just listen here. I don't think people are getting rid of phones anytime soon. When phones became the primary computing platform, we didn't get rid of computers. We just kind of shifted, right? So I, I don't know if, if you have this experience, but at some point in the early 2010s, I noticed that I'd be sitting at my desk in front of my computer and I'd just pull out my phone to do things. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen, it's not like we're going to throw away our phones, but I think slowly we're just going to start doing more things with our glasses and leaving our phones in our pockets more. And it's not like we're done with our computers and I don't think we're going to be done with our phones for a while, but there's a pretty clear path where, where you're just going to use your glasses for more and more things and over time, I think the glasses are also going to be able to be powered by wrist-based wearables or other wearables. So you're going to wake up one day 10 years ago from now, and you're not even going to need to bring your phone with you. Now, you're still going to have a phone, but I, I think like well, more of the time people are going to leave it in their pocket or leave it in their bag or eventually even some of the time leave it in their at home. And um, I think there will just be this sort of gradual shift to glasses becoming the main way that we do computing. It's interesting that we're talking about this right now because I feel like phones are becoming kind of boring and stale. You know, like I I just was like looking at the new iPhone and it's basically the same as the year before. People are doing foldables, but like, it yeah. feels like people have kind of run out of ideas on phones and that they're kind of at their natural end state. When you realize that 2 billion people on the planet already wear glasses and thick frames are in style, it doesn't sound that far-fetched that many people would make the switch. Although almost all of Meta's revenue and profit is currently from its advertising, it's not hard to see a future where Meta's smart glasses supplant the smartphone and become a huge revenue driver for the company in the same way that the iPhone has been for Apple. As I've always said with Meta, I have zero problem with the company sinking billions into its R&D for Reality Labs, something a lot of investors criticize it for, because ultimately this is a great investment for the future and companies that don't innovate eventually stagnate. If Reality Labs were to fail, the cash flows going into it would just be added straight back on to the free cash flow and the profit margin of the company. So really it's a win-win situation, even if Reality Labs fails or succeeds. Meta was my number one bet for this year and so far it's done very well, up nearly 60% over double the S&P 500's 25%. I'm personally sitting at a big profit and would rather be buying more of this stock than selling, even though it's already the largest position in my portfolio. That's how much I rate the company at the moment. Valuation wise, it's really not that expensive in my opinion, sitting at a low 20s forward price to earnings ratio and a 3.6% free cash flow yield. There's not that much to not like in my opinion. The only problem will be if advertising revenue starts drying up due to a global recession or something that major, but even then it will just make the stock cheaper and more attractive to buy for the recovery, similar to 2021 when the stock price went down so much after an advertising apocalypse pretty much. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.